This geometric bookshelf is one of a series of builds I collaborated with Jen Woodhouse to build. I love its eye-catching design and the rich patina of the reclaimed wood used to construct it. Want to build one? You can find the plans at jenwoodhouse.com and a step-by-step -step tutorial at thecreatedhome.com. Here's a brief look at what it takes to put this bookshelf together. The shelf can be made by cutting fresh lumber to dimension or by milling reclaimed wood. For this project, I used reclaimed Douglas fir barn boards. It's a messy job and I added a level of difficulty by deciding to retain the natural warm patina the boards had accumulated over the past century. So for every side that I ripped, I reapplied a piece of veneer. Each board ended up with two original sides and two fresh edges in need of veneer. Now, just to make something clear, I'm thrilled with how the shelf turned out. And this was an extremely time consuming and messy business that resulted in me questioning my sanity more than once. But after a good sanding, when the edges came together smoothly and the dust settled, well, there you have it. After veneering, I cut the miters at the end of all of the pieces, being sure to lay out the design so I didn't mix up any miter directions. Then I cut the half laps on the table saw, fitting each joint individually so they would be good and snug. Next, I turned my attention to the shelves. At 13 inches, these needed to be formed of two boards joined together. I used my Festool Domino to do this, though pegs or biscuits or even just a straight glue joint would also work fine. After the two boards were joined, I ran them back through the table saw to cut them to final width. The shelves are notched around the structure's main supports and I chose to cut those notches on the table saw as well. I then laid out positions for the notches on the legs. Placing the legs side by side ensures that the shelves will set level, which is particularly important as those shelves do fit very snugly. Next, I assembled the first few half laps and glued up the mitered corners. I should note that these were previously sealed with a 50-50 water glue mixture to make sure that the joint didn't just soak up the glue when I assembled it. I then secured each miter joint with a peg. Assembly was a tricky bit of work given the size of the shelf and the tight fitting joints. I used pipe clamps to pull it all together. I did go back and add pegs to each place where the legs were notched into the shelves. I then assembled the rest of the legs a couple at a time, gluing and clamping as I went. I let each joint sit for about a day before securing with a peg. The process took a couple of days, but then it was time to put the shelf up on its own feet and start sanding. As I mentioned, the veneered pieces made for a good bit of sanding, but I was able to retain the rough textured look and still have it be splinter free and soft. I finished it all off with a clear wax. The shelf is not light, but it is sturdy and strong. I would recommend securing it to the wall if you have little monkeys that might climb on it, but it is quite stable on its own. I love the look of this shelf, and I'm extremely happy with the decision to keep the patina. Be sure to pick up the plans at jenwoodhouse.com and check out my site, thecreatedhome.com, for more pointers on the build process.